Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first training for the 12 Stone Moldova team. I'm very happy to have you here today. Um, let's get started. First thing is I want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Larry Ferguson and I've been with Tomorrow Clubs, uh, involved with Tomorrow Clubs since 2004, um, since I went to Ukraine, Zaporizhia, Ukraine in 2004, and um, I'm going to guide you through the preparation phase of getting ready for this trip. Um, I'm very, very, very thankful that you're all here and um, we're going to go around and do a group introduction um, but before we do uh, I'd like to pray thanks God for all the things that you've done and thank you for bringing all these people to go to Moldova this year I just pray God for your protection and your wisdom and your guidance and your provision uh, as we go and then after we come home I just pray for the fruit that's the seed that's planted that it would bear fruit and even eternal fruit In Jesus name Amen so what I would like you to do uh, is to go around and introduce yourself and one expectation that you have uh, for the trip this year one expectation, just go around from um, right to left or clockwise. And um, if you could, could you come up to the screen? Because I have a hard time hearing everyone. So if you come up, I'd appreciate it. My name is Daniel English. Um, I'm, Hi, from this mission trip, I'm not really expecting to, I don't have any expectations, I guess I'd say. Um, of course, my last one I had a lot of expectations, and I, they were exceeded, and none of them were what I expected them to be. So I'm really just letting God do his thing. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm in confession. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> um, my name is Victor. I am uh, I am from Moldova, actually, um, and I have been to Moldova on a mission trip in 2013. My expectations for this, uh, well, I guess my expectations, my goals, and what I hope to see more than anything else is... Uh, for people to receive Christ as their Savior, um, not only the kids, but their parents too. Um, and that's my goal and expectation for this, is, is to be an uh, instrument for God to um, save people's souls. That's great, Victor. Are you from Moldova? Yes. Wow. So what language do you speak? Russian? You... I speak Romanian. Romanian? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's next in The Price is Right? Okay, it'll be me. Um, I'm Jacqueline. We met a little earlier, but I am um, kind of co-leading with Lisa. She's really leading the team. Um, this is my second mission trip, and I um, am kind of going into this just open, like Daniel said, not sure exactly what to expect, but looking forward to... Um, the people that I'll meet and come in contact with and what I may learn from them. So. Great. Next. <laughs> I'm Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Um, my expectations are just to make a difference in the lives of everyone that we meet along the way, not only in Moldova, but um, on the plane rides and stuff too. Okay. Thank you. Now, I know some of you guys are related in some way, like daughter, daughter, 
father, son. <laughs> if, if you can make that connection for me when you come, when you do your confessional, I'll be, I'll be good. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sandra Herring. Um, this is my first mission trip. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to be blessed by learning about another culture, and I am looking forward to being able to work with children and help them and just to be a light for God, and hopefully somebody can see that light and it'll do something for them. That's wonderful. Okay, who's next? Okay. So, yeah. I know. Okay. Um, I'm Kelsey. I am Lisa Goodwin's daughter. Okay. Who, yeah, so um, you are, you're one related. Yes. <laughs> None of the pairs are actually here because my mom is currently in Hawaii. But uh, I'm here. Yeah. Um, so my biggest hope for this trip is um, I do believe that all of us have been called to go to Moldova for a very specific purpose. And so I really just hope um, that we're open and willing to respond to whatever that purpose and call is. Yes. Yes, that's good. Thank you. All right. Kind of Hi. Kind I'm Jean. Um, my daughter, Veronica, will be joining me on this trip. We, she's not here. She is auditioning for a play. Okay. Um, she is 15 years old. Okay. Uh, Great. She and I have never been on a mission before. This is our first. And we're both really excited about it. Um, for myself, I'm a big kid. I love kids, and I love to play with them. And beyond being able to invest in children's lives, that's really what my goals and expectations are. Wonderful. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, God always manages to show up, and wonderful things occur. So I'm, I'm good. Um, and I know my daughter is very excited about this, too. So um, we wanted to do it together. Mm -hmm. And um, so here we are. Nice what? to meet you. Wonderful. Thank you. Is that is that everybody or? That's everybody that's able to make it to the meeting. Okay. Um, we do have a father son team. Um, Fourteen year old Noah and his dad David are going with us, but they weren't able to be here today. Okay. Uh, just so you know, if I if I'm looking at the wrong place, not looking at the camera, I have three screens here, so it's you know you, I may seem like I'm not paying attention to you, but I am paying attention to you. Just so you know. Um, so at any rate, let's get, uh, let's get going again here. I guess the first question that I have for you guys is, um, you know, where we're going to go, you know, what we're going to do today. We did this introductions. Can you see my screen? Okay. Or can you see, can you see my screen? We can see you. Is there... Okay, now we can see the third. You'd be able to see a screen with my name on it. Okay. Okay, so there's my uh, there's my email address. You can email me if you have questions about things. There's my cell phone. You can call me if you need to. Um, we did the group introductions. We went, uh, and I just want to thank you guys again for the commitment that you've made to come on this uh, this trip. Um, I'm just gonna say that you will be blessed more than you can believe. Um, I can't tell you how uh, thankful we are for you guys, but I'm going to say you're going to be blessed uh, more than, uh, probably much more than, than you realize. Um, and so thank you so much uh, for this. The Spirit of God is working in the former Soviet Union. Um, I think things are in upheaval and uh, especially in Ukraine and Eastern Ukraine and Victor could probably tell you s some of what exactly is happening in Eastern Ukraine and I think Putin is moving across Ukraine and, and at some point wants to you know annex uh, Moldova there's a there's a like a demilitarized zone or a place where there's soldiers Russian soldiers right close to uh, Moldova so um, you know I think the time that we have to share gospel in the former Soviet Union is uh, probably coming to a close. And so I just want to thank you guys for your commitment. Uh, thank you. And uh, I'm sure that God will bless you and in, in the things that you that you do. Where we're going to go today is I'm going to give you a, like a 50,000 view uh, foot view of, of, of responsibilities 
and then I'll let you ask questions about anything that you want to. And if I probably can answer the questions. Uh, if I can't, I'll, I'll find out and get back to you. So that's kind of where we're going. Um, we talked about your expectations. And um, I guess the next thing that I – a question I have for you is what do you know about Tomorrow Clubs? Do you know anything about Tomorrow Clubs? Anybody? That's what we saw on the website. Yeah, we, yeah, most of us have been on the website and, and read about – uh, the clubs and um, Moldova and Romania. And so that's the extent of what we know. Most of us have checked that out. Okay. I have a video here, and I, it'll probably be a little jerky for you to look at it, but I think it gives you a really good idea of what Tomorrow Clubs is about. I don't know if you've seen this or not, but uh, you may have seen it. You may not have seen it. Uh, I'll make try to make sure that you can see what's happening here. Okay. Uh, so, do you have any questions about tomorrow clubs from that? Do I have any questions? No. Not, not about tomorrow club, but I do have a question about the location we're going to be at when we go to Moldova. Yeah. Do you know what the name of the town is? Yes, I do, and we'll go over that. Um, but it is going to be pretty close to the um, capital, uh, Kisinau, uh, or I'm probably saying it, butchering it, but um, that's where it's going to be, close close to that uh, the capital city. Any other questions? All right. Let's keep going here. See if I can get this to go. Okay, let's go over the goal for for your trip. Um, did my did my webcam stop? Yes. Yes. Okay, I want to put it back up again. Okay. Can you see me now? Yes. yes. Good. Um, let's see. Always on front. Okay. So the goal really is uh, through your participation in a, an English camp, um, you're going to start or strengthen an, an existing Tomorrow Club. In this particular uh, instance, it will be. I think you'll be starting a new club. There's no club in the place that um, that we've been that you're going to be going and then to share the love of Christ is the the most one of the most important things to you can do children know whether you love them or not and sometimes um, that's the most powerful thing they can do just love on the children and you know, spend time with them and tell them about yourself they're very interested in in who you are um, and you'll be working with a local church you'll be working uh, with a group of Moldovans um, at, that will teach the Bible, and then you guys will end up being um, the people who actually teach the English. So um, that's the the overall goal is to start a new uh, Tomorrow Club. Um, I think one of the most important things, uh, as far as having a significant impact for um, to go on a trip is your heart and the spiritual preparation that you have. Um, the Word of God and prayer and actually looking at your heart uh, is important. And I guess more than anything, you know, now we should be praying about uh, the children's hearts, uh, that God will prepare them for to hear the truth of the gospel and that they would respond. Um, I think... Uh, we'll, be, we'll talk a little bit about this, but nothing significant spiritually happens without prayer. I mean, prayer is the as a as a tool and one of the um, most important tools that we can use when we when we uh, do anything that's spiritual. Um, Peter Danica, he's the uh, 
basically he was the founder of, of Slavic Gospel Mission. And, and he said that, uh, you know, much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power. The significance will be, uh, will be made um, in your prayer, in your spiritual life, in the, the time that you spend alone with God and actually searching your soul and praying for the people that you're going to, to be with and really praying for what happens after you leave. I think, the, you know, we always plan for trips and get ready for trips and that's the most important thing to, to go on a trip. But really, the most important thing is what you leave behind. Um, and here's just a section out of, of, of um, section out of Peter Danica's book. Uh, it actually is called Much Prayer, Much Power. And I will, I'm going to give you this PowerPoint so you can take a look at it. It's a free download, but it says that the the Bible, the Holy Word of God, gives us many reasons why we should pray. Yet many people do not think it is important or necessary to emphasize prayer. There are Christians who depend much on experience, education, works, effort, action, and programs, yet leave out the most important thing in the Christian life, prayer. Uh, some seldom pray. Others pray only when they feel like it. We are not to pray only when we feel like praying. According to the Word of God, prayer is the, must be a regular common practice in our lives. It is our spiritual breath and our life. We cannot live spiritually without it. Christ needed uh, to pray. We must pray. In Matthew 14, 23, we read, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone. Just think, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, prayed and talked much in private to his heavenly Father. If the Son of God prayed, how much more? Do we need to pray to our Heavenly Father? Jesus went alone to a mountain to pray, and one of us can get alone to pray. Uh, any one of us can get alone to pray. It is most important for each Christian to go to a place where no one can disturb him and pour out his heart to God. Um, and I think that's what I'm just going to we'll stop there. It's just uh, I can't tell you how important that is, especially when you're in another culture. Um, there's so many things that will crop up as you, that you ha have been on mission trips, some interpersonal things and some things that are out of your, your control. Um, and bathing what happens in prayer and having people pray for you is you know, one of the most important things that you can do. And even now, you know, praying ahead of time. And I I would suggest that you guys get a partner, a prayer partner on your team, and you start praying now for uh, the things that are going to happen um, on on the trip and then the, also the things that are going to happen post-trip. Uh, I think the question, the real question is, what will you leave for eternity when you leave there? Um, uh, and I've been on many, many trips, and it's very difficult because you get to talk to the children, and you, you they, they often ask you, what, when are you going to come back? Are you going to come and tell us, tell us about Christ? Uh, I mean, tell, teach us again. And uh, I say no. I'm, I'm probably never going to see you again. Uh, my entire life, uh, the only way that I'm going to see you is if you trust Christ as your Savior. Um, and I think. Um, you know, you need to recognize that uh, those things that are happening when you're there are preordained. There are preordained meetings, and there's long-term relationships that can be formed in the in those in those mission trip settings. Um, particularly, those relationships can actually be cultivated with the. Um, oh, actually, I want to go back here with the. Um, Oh, sorry. They can be cultivated with Facebook and with um, email and with uh, Skype. So I think uh, those are the things that you should think about as you're uh, there and as you're involved with people's lives. Um, just as a way and an example, in my first year in 2004, my translator, um, we met in 2004, and we've been in contact and working together since then. So we've been working together for 11 years, which is um, pretty amazing. 
um, and their family's been here and my family's been there and uh, it's just a it's a tremendous opportunity um, they anybody have any comments about that or thoughts before we go on No, the only question I had um, so far was, is we're launching a new club. Does the club operate out of a church, or is it a separate building? It, I wasn't sure about that. It's always, uh, almost all the clubs are really tightly affiliated with the church. It may not be in the church, but the people of the church will be running it, most likely. Okay. Okay, so the the church is really the um, it, it it is really the uh, organization or the way that the children are followed up, and uh, this the Tomorrow Club's work. Um, I can I can't I just can't tell you enough about how it's actually impacted. Um, they started in Ukraine and now they're moving into different countries, but. I just was at a conference in January for all the Tomorrow Club leaders uh, and actually all the different countries and all the ones in Ukraine and um, some of these are second generation leaders now, the leaders that have, that came to the clubs, grew up in the clubs, trusted Christ in the clubs, got involved in the church and then ended up now lead the, uh, lead the clubs and actually some of them have met their spouses in the clubs. It's a, it's a mechanism that God's been using to be able to strengthen the church and, and uh, particularly change the culture and thought process of, uh, of, of, of a whole country, Ukraine. So, any other questions or thoughts or comments? No. Okay, now we're going to talk about travel a little bit. Um, this, I'm assuming everybody has a passport. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. Uh, we do not need a, a visa for um, for Moldova, um, but I will. I do ask you guys to do something for us. Um, we need to have uh, medical records and medical release uh, from you guys. So. One of the things I would like you to do is go to Tomorrow Clubs and trip registration and um, go, it's actually, you know, tomorrowclubs.org forward slash trip registration and then check, um, your trip is not on here and that's on purpose because we don't want anybody else actually registering for it. But if you put, if you go ahead and check Moldova and then just fill in this, this will give us your uh, information about your any medical conditions or allergies or medications that you have also give us a release uh, also a family contact for uh, emergency um, you know if you we need to get in touch with a physician and then it'll give us also a release so if you could do that I would really really appreciate it, it it's something that we have to have uh, especially when you're in country because you're going to be under our care uh, when you're in country. So if you could do that, and that, that URL is tomorrowclubs.org forward slash trip registration, trip hyphen registration, trip hyphen registration. Can you guys see the screen okay? Do you, is it big enough so that you can actually see it? It's big enough. We can't really read it, but we're, we're kind of following along best we can. Okay. <laughs> Sorry that you can't read it. Uh, hang on just a second. It's okay. Yeah. Let me get here. I'll try to make it a little bigger so that you guys can see things. Just a second. Yeah, we can see it better now, too. We adjusted our screen, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. The next thing is um, you're going to be landing in the capital city, 
and maybe Victor can say it for me, but it I think it's Kisanu or Kishanu, Victor. You had it right the second time. Kishanu. Okay. Um, let me see. Hang on just a second. I had a whole slide just to be able to show you that. Now it's gone. It's a it's a nice um, nice airport. It's a nice place, and um, you'll be staying in that area in that airport. Okay. The person uh, who be picking you up is the Tomorrow Club um, representative, and I'll show you him here in a second as soon as it opens up. And that's that's Vic, uh, that's uh, Lodia. Okay. He's the guy that's going to be be picking you up at the, uh, and actually he'll be the guy that's coordinating everything for us um, through the week. Can you send us a photo of him so we can recognize him when we, when we get to the airport? He's going to give us a copy of the PowerPoint. Okay, here it is. I'll give you a copy of the PowerPoint um, so you can actually drill down into that and get, um, you can get the picture of him. Um, yeah, I'll open it up again so you can see him. Uh, <laughs> I've been working with Velodya since 2004. He was at our first camp. He was 19, so he's just 30. Um, he's actually lives in Ukraine. Uh, he's he might be drafted to the war. We're hoping that he doesn't get drafted to the war. Uh, really good guy. He, he's an orphan. Uh, I guess his parents died later in life, but he's a really very nice guy. Uh, I've, I've been working with him for quite a while. And, I, and uh, this is linked. I'll send you the PowerPoint and then you can see it. Um, he's a Tomorrow Club trip coordinator. That's what his his communicate uh, his um, official title is. And all all your uh, what what happened? All your uh, any kind of communication that you have should actually go through um, actually go through me um, or you can go, you can go to Veloda if you want to but it's probably not going to be as efficient if it comes through if it doesn't come through me or actually goes through Lisa okay any any questions there no. When you find out the exact location, is there any way you could uh, email that to us? Oh, yeah. Just because I have relatives there, because uh, I do have relatives that live really close to the capital city, and I don't know if the town we're going to might be one of those towns. Yeah. So I just, you know. Yeah, it's, um, to tell you the truth, um, the final location has not been determined at, at, at this point. It's going to be within 20 minutes of the um within the 20 minutes of the capital because it, the, that was the request that 12 stone made that it would be that, that wherever you go would be um, you know close to the capital so they they're having a conference at tomorrow clubs conference on um, the 6th of, of uh, June and that's when we'll uh, find out who uh, exactly where it's going to be the the camp coordinators are here. Um, this is Eric Petrenko, um, and I'll translate that to English so you can actually read it. Um, that's him and his wife, uh, Anya. I actually worked with them last summer. Uh, these are their kids here, okay? But the kids on the side are actually two kids that they adopted, and they do that on a regular basis. They they adopt kids that are just on the street, basically don't really have any any home, any place to call their home. So they give them a place to stay and uh, adopt them. Uh, and there's a lot of children like that that really are just basically on the street. Um, and these, I can't say enough about these people. You guys are getting, you're in for a treat. You're going to love these people. Um, I actually got to see them. Uh, in January at the conference, and uh, uh, we we actually were on a, uh, able to ski with uh, with Eric uh, Edward, and it was a really good thing, fun thing to teach him Moldovan how to ski. 
who never had ski before. <laughs> so I got to do that. Okay, transportation to and from the camp. Again, Velodia will be coordinating that. It'll be uh, 20 minutes or less um, that you guys will be um, involved in, in riding every day. Uh, the, the Again, the exact location um, is yet to be determined. Um, I guess you all know where um, Kissing You is, and it's kind of, I'll pull it up here so you can see it. If you haven't looked at it on the map, you should. I'll back it out a little bit so you can see it. There it is. It's right beside Romania and Ukraine. Here's the Black Sea. Here's all. Here's where all the problems are going on. Uh, it's over on the, the eastern uh, border of Ukraine is where all the issues are. This is um, Crimea, where they, where Russia just annexed, annexed this this place right here. So that's something that's happening. So the exact location will be determined June 6th. They're going to have it tomorrow. Clubs. Uh, conference and that then that's when it's going to be um, decided. You'll be uh, staying at Genna's house. Genna is the um, he. Uh, I don't know how to say this. Tomorrow clubs is um, under the umbrella of Hope International. Hope International is a uh, microfinance uh, com, com, uh, organization who provides small loans for people uh, that really can't don't really qualify for uh, larger loans and it uh, help them to work their way out of poverty and again uh, actually works for one of, of hope international's partners romcom and um, you're going to be staying at his house i've actually stayed the place that you're going to be staying it's a very very nice place i mean it it's as nice as any five star a uh, five star hotel that you're gonna find uh it's just really nice and uh, you got wi-fi it's got you got all the amenities that you're gonna have at some of the best places in in the states it's a very nice facility that you're going to be staying the food Breakfast and dinner will be at Guinness House, a really nice place, and then lunch will be at the camp uh, with the kids. Okay. Okay, so this is, again, this is a very high level uh, view of what your responsibilities will be in the camp. Okay, we're going to go over the different uh, responsibilities and, you know, what you'll be required to bring. And then we'll also. Um, go over a schedule of what a day is going to look like, a tentative schedule, so you get to see what that tentative schedule looks like. Um, and then we'll, there's different jobs that we've broken. We have the, the camp broken down into different jobs. But this is more or less a very high level of what you're going to be responsible for. The next time we meet together, I'll, uh, we'll learn a little bit more about it. And the third time, I'm going to get into the nitty-gritty of, um, you know, what you, how you would teach an English class and um, how you do the drama, how you would do the singing and songs. So um, the first thing is you're going to be responsible actually for one church service. I didn't change that. The uh, Romanian team is um, going to be responsible for two church services. But one church service, one song, it would be a song that you probably a worship song that you're familiar with that uh, – that most people would be, you know, familiar with. Uh, Lord, I lift your name on high. That's something that they would be familiar with. Um, you are my all and all. That would be another one. And then testimonies, uh, three testimonies is what they would typically require. And then a, a sermonette. And uh, typically the sermonette is 15 to 20 minutes. And Victor can tell you more about that. It's, uh, it's kind of a, out of respect. They ask uh, anybody that's a kind of a visitor, and typically the team leader or the oldest male, to give a um, 
a sermon. Okay, and the testimony is probably five to ten minutes. So, um, so you you guys will be responsible for one song, three or four testimonies. I think everybody should prepare their testimony because it it comes in useful no matter what. And then one sermon sermonette. Somebody should be responsible to put that together. And we'll go through those responsibilities a little cl more closely here in a second. Um, English lesson, okay, and supplies. Let me um, open up this tab, um, and I'm going to show you where you can get some of this. And I don't know, some of you guys are, may have already looked at this, okay. But um, here's the curriculum that we have, okay, and... It's right here, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And each one of you will be responsible to teach uh, an English class. Okay. Now, if you don't feel comfortable sometimes, depending on how many kids we have, um, you may be able to, to pair up with somebody else and team teach. Um, but if, if we have a lot of kids, you're, I, I don't think you're going to have an option uh, not to uh, teach. One of the things that you should be doing right now is take a look at these curriculums and actually think about what age group that you would like to uh, to teach. The younger kids, the, uh, next, the second uh, youngest, or the older kids. We more or less break them up like that, although you could break them up by the ability with English. But this is what we use, um, and we do it. We break them up more by um more by their age than anything. So, <coughs> here is the curriculum itself, and um, you can take a look at this, uh, and it, it it's pretty self-explanatory, and some of you probably have already looked at it, uh, looked at some of these. Um, one thing I want to call your attention to is that uh, you take a, a really close look at this page right here. It's usually the second page inside the curriculum. Um, and you should actually probably print one of these out for yourself, depending on what age group you're going to teach, so that you have a copy. We do provide um, a copy of the curriculum uh, in some cases. Uh, this may not be one that we actually provide one for because there's, uh, I don't know for sure, if, um, that's something that's more on the logistics on the on the uh, in country side, uh, but so you can print one of these out and you, you have it. Um, what you provide, what is uh, your responsibility, is uh, here on under this list. And I don't know if you can see it or not well, but it's this. Are, these are the things that you'd be responsible for, and you know. And these are things that you would use to teach your lesson, okay? Like a prop, a man's tie, a woman's scarf, and other other ideas are a baseball cap, boa, silly disguise, glass, nose, wig. And um, that's something that you would bring along. And then on the right-hand side is something, when they say Hope International, it means tomorrow clubs. That's something that uh, you'll be provided um with you'll be provided with that and these are things to help you actually teach your um, teach your your English class okay so it would be a really good idea for you to take a look at that um, again if you want to get back to it actually I've it's it's in this link it's in the PowerPoint and you can actually go back to it and look at it and uh, look at the supplies and the things that you uh, will need to teach the class. You also should be thinking about what age group that you want to teach, whether it's the youngest kids or um, 6 to 16 is typically the ages that we have. Uh, so, you know, like 6 to 9, 9 to 12 or 13, and then 13 and up would probably be mostly the, the breakdowns that they that are used. Let me back up here again. So you'll be responsible for an uh, English lesson and supplies, and then dramas and skits. Um, dramas and skits, um, basically they're silent mimes. Um, I don't know, some of you probably haven't experienced with those, those items. Um, and I can give you the details about that. 
and supplies for them would be any kind of props that would go with your dramas. Um, like if you need a sheet or if you needed you know, something that you wanted to, like a tree or some something that you wanted to hold up, um, you know, to 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 go along with your drama, that would be what you would bring along. Uh, songs, uh, English songs, um, and also the supplies, probably either um, butcher board that has the song on it in English, and then um, maybe you want to translate, transliterate it underneath uh, that. Maybe Victor can help with that. Um, but it, the kids really like to learn English songs with motions. And um, as you might guess, it, it, it's needs to be simple so that they don't have, um, so it's not really, really difficult. Puppets, um, that's optional. Sometimes people take puppets, sometimes they don't. It's really it, what you want to do. Um, it actually does very much keep the kid's attention if you should decide to do puppets or puppet show. Um, there are there are items in different languages too, or you know, taped parts that are in like different languages. Uh, sports, uh, we'll, we will need to bring all the supplies involved in any of the sporting events. And as we'll look at the schedule, you'll be able to see uh, what that means. Um, the chances are that there won't be many supplies at all. Uh, there really won't be anything. And uh, bringing an extra soccer ball for the kids um, to be able to to play soccer or to have a ball as a prize, uh, that would be uh, fantastic. Um, I always get uh, my friend who goes to yard sales when he, I said, make sure you look for soccer balls because uh, if you give a 12-year-old boy a soccer ball, uh, I, it, it just, it'll overwhelm him because that's like, that's his life. Soccer is his life. Uh, I remember I picked one guy out that I wanted to give a soccer ball at the end of the at the end of the camp, and so I gave him a soccer ball, and uh, he was he was in tears, a little twelve year old guy. But uh, you know, it's just something that they they don't have uh, they don't have access to. They are very very poor, a lot of very a lot of poverty in that country. Uh, people living in uh, places, uh, any place they can it, it, in case. I, I don't want to offend you at all, Victor, but um, there is a lot of poverty there. No, no offense taken. Um, there's the gifts for children. Uh, in your class, you'll be able to uh, reward kids. Uh, I always take like Jolly Ranchers and little trinkets like hair bobbles for the girls. And um, so I take gifts for the children. You also need a gift for your interpreter, the person who's working with you. Um, that I usually take some kind of uh, hygiene, like maybe um, you know, washcloth and a nice towel. Maybe has the USA on it or something. Um, you know, I usually take something like that, or a T-shirt that has USA on it. Um, then you'll also have a helper that actually works with you. You'll have an interpreter and a helper that actually is teaching the English lesson. So you'll need to bring a gift for that person as well. Um, that I'm sorry. Who's the second who, helper, helper for the, the interpreter, and you have a helper. Okay. Okay. Um, and then you're not staying in a host home, but I'm sure you'll probably want to bring something for Gena's wife. Um, you're kind of in a home, but it, it's more like and really is more like a motel. Um, you'll see, you'll see, it's just uh, incredible. And then cultural day, um, and you'll need to bring supplies for that. Cultural day is there, uh, there's a day in the schedule that um, we do um, American day and they do, they'll actually do a Moldovan day, which is kind of a display of the culture. Um, and for American Day, um, what that means is, and this is a typically way we do it, and I think I would suggest you, you do it as well because it's a really good way to, to get it to work, is to set up um, an, an American Day, you set up uh, stations, okay? 
and typically there's three uh, cultural things that you want to demonstrate. Uh, the first one is um, you want to do something with history uh, because, of course, you know, not a lot of people know, know much of, you know, people who are interested in the history, uh, um, things that are not something that um, anybody in Moldova would have, like Thanksgiving or the 4th of, Ju 4th of July or uh, maybe even tell how we celebrate Christmas and when we celebrate Christmas, sometimes in different cultures, there's different days you celebrate Christmas and different, different um, um, actually traditions that they have that are different than what we do. So, um, and I have, you know, I have a PowerPoint that kind of would walk you through that part of it. So one is history. One, one station would be history. The second station would be something like um, sports. And in most cases I do, and these kids love this. I do um, the wiffle ball. I take the, like four or five wiffle bats along and uh, wiffle balls along. I don't try to teach them baseball. That's don't don't ever do that. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, it's just to have, actually get them, give them an opportunity to be able to to um, opportunity to be able to to hit the ball and run to run to a base. I mean that's. That's pretty much, you know, just being able to hit hit the ball is uh, is a really good thing for them. Um, then the Jesus movie. Chances are that they will have um, a projector and a screen there, but that's something that you need to uh, provide. The Jesus movie can be downloaded, and actually I've already downloaded it, I think. And um, in the Jesus movie is not the full length Jesus movie. It's the Jesus movie for children, and it's in, um, I think this particular camp is going to be in Romanian. Um, different different parts of Moldova have, diff they speak different languages, and I think this one's in Romanian. So that's good, Victor, that you're fluent. Okay, so the Jesus movie is used uh, on the, the, like towards the end of the week. And the way the, the Bible lessons go, they go from creation to the cross, uh, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And you'll see that when we pull up the actual schedule. Um, and, okay, hang on just a second. Something messed up. Can you still hear me? Yes. Can you see me? Yes. Did I freeze? Yes. <laughs> do I look really strange? Yes. But that doesn't have to do with the video. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It'll probably get, it'll probably come back here. Uh, hopefully it'll come back. Let me see if I can. You're moving now. Oh, I am? Yeah. You're unfrozen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be frozen. I, don't <laughs> I hear that's a good movie, Fro Frozen. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I never, I never saw it. So. <laughs> okay, so we just need to make sure that the Jesus movie is there, and you can do it because that's that's the time when we actually give the uh, the altar call or the time that people, the children, can repent. It's a very special time. So that's something that you need to oh need to bring. I've got a question. Are we doing? The camp Monday through Thursday, like for those four days, or is it on Friday too? Yeah, it'll be on Friday too. Okay, so five days. And we'll probably show the Jesus movie on Friday, the last day? Actually, usually we do it on Thursday. Um, there's a, something that we'll go over. With, uh, there's a parent's presentation that you're going to be preparing for throughout the week, and that's typically on Friday. It, it's a very limited schedule on Friday. You get uh, the parents. We ask the parents to come and uh, learn what the see what the kids learned, and it's actually an opportunity for us to um, present the gospel to the parents as well as for them to see their children, and also promote the start of the to tomorrow club. So, and that's really when you say goodbyes and everything. So it's a it's a very limited schedule on Friday. Okay. Okay. Can we ask you a question about cultural day? Sure. Um, you were saying there's three oh, yeah. 
Okay, I missed the third one. I'm sorry. I jumped, <laughs> I jumped over it. The third one, believe it or not, is um, food. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we we've always done this, and I know you're gonna. If there's any nurses in there, they're gonna shudder. But uh, we always do peanut butter and jelly. We've always done it. We've had never never ever had a problem with any kind of peanut allergy. Um, and the kids love it. You know, if you want to do something else like hot dogs or something, I don't. I guess you could do that, but it's always a big hit, peanut butter and jelly. And maybe if you, I, they don't have the same kind of reaction to peanut butter as we do for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Sorry, right, thank you. Thank you for stopping me. Okay, um, you're gonna be. This is the way that I would break this down, and so. Uh, I would think that this you guys should be starting to think about what you want to do on the team. You need a sports leader, somebody that's going to be responsible to prepare, bring all the supplies and bring all the the games for the camp. Okay, one of the ones that's always a hit with those, the kids is we we uh, bring giant slingshots to throw to uh, shoot water balloons. <clears throat> at the so what we end up doing there is we we, um, we break the – each of them is on a – they're actually in a class. So we each give them each a sheet, and then we send them down at the other side of the, the field, and we tell them to hold on to the sheet. The whole team has to hold around the sheet, and then they're able to move around. And then we start, um, you know, four or five water balloons that we launch up in the air – and um, they love, they just absolutely love that. They love to get wet. And their goal is to catch as many of those water balloons as they can. Uh, the winner actually gets a prize, but the winner actually gets to do something for, for us. It's all the leaders have to get in a, like a, a 10 by 10 square area where they can't come out. And the balloons that the kids actually have caught they get to basically pelt all the leaders with the oh, water. Oh, oh, oh. That's awesome. That's they just absolutely, the kids just absolutely love that. I mean, they just. I understand. And we dodge the water. Exactly, dodge ball. Um, so we need a team photographer. I'm sure there's somebody that takes pictures with your team that, that would probably be their one of their major responsibilities. So everybody doesn't have to have a camera and going around and snapping pictures. Obviously, you're going to want to take some pictures of of your team and the kids that you have. Uh, but it's really nice if you have one person who's more or less you know dedicated to taking pictures, and then they'll also be responsible to kind of you know gather them together and put them in a place um, where you can. You can look at them when you're done. And then in our case, on our trips, we always have to have somebody that puts together a presentation at the end of the, um, <coughs> at the, end of the, uh, the, the time when you're actually coming back home. Uh, with the advances in, um, with the advances in, in technology, uh, it's really nice, um, and, and the Macs have a nice thing where you can put a nice slideshow together with some, um, you know, with the pictures and just kind of let them put them up on the screen on the last day at when the parents are there and just let them run because the kids, they like to see themselves. So um, that would be something. Then we need somebody that's kind of a geek that would be responsible for the movies and projector and screen. And the reason why I say that is because that's, that would be me uh, on a trip. Um, daily devotionals, I didn't talk to you about this, but uh, every day um, the team, which would consist of you guys and your Moldovan co counterparts, will, will meet for about 20 minutes at the beginning of the day, and they'll have a devotional time, five minutes or less, that, you, that one person out of the team would be responsible each day to give. Okay, so we need somebody that would coordinate that, and then they also would uh, – they could be the same person, but they would coordinate uh, the, the sermonettes, the 2.15 minutes. Actually, you're, you guys are only going to do one uh, sermonette. Okay, let's keep going here. 
if it keeps wants to go with me. Right. Okay. The the English curriculum leader. This is a pretty intensive thing, okay? Um, and um, this is the way I suggest you do it. You can do it so that everybody does their own, but it's much nicer if people, uh, you have one person who actually takes care of the curriculum and buys all the supplies and for the team's English lesson and brings them back and kind of puts them in, in bags. The way that works the best, okay, is to get a 10 gallon, kind of a 10 gallon, um, bag, plastic bag, Ziploc bag, and then get smaller bags and stick it in, stick them inside uh, that big bag. But the smaller bags are each day. And then you have your supplies in each day. And then you have one big bag that has kind of everything that you need for the whole week. Um, that's my suggestion. That works the best. Now, one thing that's nice about you guys is you, you have time in the evening to prepare. In past years, uh, on these trips, you really didn't have any time to prepare at all. The luggage, luggage leader, this person would be responsible to coordinate the team's luggage and transportation. That actually includes, you know, if anything gets lost. Um, the times that you're going to need that person to kind of coordinate that and um, is actually when you get off the airplane, when you get on the airplane, when you load stuff up on the van, when you take it off, if you lose anything, um, and unfortunately that does happen. I don't. I think you guys have one connection. Uh, music leader, that person will be responsible for preparing and leading the camp songs. Um, everybody is going to be up in front, help leading the songs, um, because the more that more excited that you guys can be about the camp and the more energy that you can give off the better the camp is going to be so i know like towards the end of the week it, it gets hard because you know you've traveled uh, 10 hours on a, an airplane and you never got over the jet lag and you, you know you, it's just hard sometimes to keep going at the high level but a high level really actually gives the, the kids a better uh experience and then uh They'd be responsible for preparing and leading the songs for the church service as well. This person, and it's only it's only one song. Uh, maybe somebody's a worship leader. Maybe somebody just likes that type of thing. We need a nurse and a first aid, and that person will be responsible for. Uh, the music leader. Yeah. Can you can you talk about the responsibilities once again, please? Yeah, um, it would be you'd be responsible for leading the camp songs. Um, Typically, every one of the, the main uh, meetings that we have, and and you'll, we'll we'll go over the schedule here in a second. Um, they have they they usually ask the American team to lead at least one or two songs in each one of those each one of those meetings. It's about a half an hour. Like one or two songs. Yeah, one or two songs, and it's typically songs like I don't know if you know who's the king of the jungle. Um, I don't know if you know that one or not, but it has nice motions to it, and the kids really like that. Um, like uh, Hallelujah, 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 Praise You, the Lord. They really like that where they get up and down and they have to do things. Father Abraham, it's another one that they like. Um, anything that they have to do a lot of motions with, they really like. And that would be the camp songs. The church songs would be more worship type songs. Right, no, but the camp songs would be like this, this person would be responsible for two songs a day, like the kids' camp songs, like Father Abraham and okay. mm -hmm. Right. And I, I'll provide you a list of ones that I've used in the past that are successful. So, you, you know, I'm not going to let you high and dry to figure this out on your own. Uh, of course, we need. Unfortunately, you need a nurse. Uh, on, or fortunately, I'm, I don't know. That person should be responsible for a uh, uh, medicine kit and and gather any in information, emergency contact list, and um, the thing, kind of the things that we went over with the registration, and also responsible for uh, 
you know, there's always, always, always skin knees or somebody that falls or somebody that's crying. And sometimes it just needs somebody to put your arm around the kid and put a Band-Aid on it and say, you're all right. I, I think there's some nurses in your, your group or something. That's what was, somebody was telling me. Uh, is there? Yeah. We have two. Yeah. Yeah, we have two. Victor and Kelsey are new, newly Good. graduated. <laughs> yeah. Then you can fight over it. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh out of school. Good. Um, you also need to make sure, you know, this person should make sure that there's medical and travel insurance information. That's something that the team leader does as well. Um, Question about the nurse again. Um, do we need to bring medical first aid supplies or yeah. will there be some provided by the camp? No. You need to bring it. I can't tell you how many times it's come in handy. I mean, uh, um, Imodium, you know, Pepto-Bismol, um, antiseptics for scratches, headaches, you know. Unfortunately, you always have it. I mean, you're going to have kids that get hurt and some adults get hurt. Um, and sometimes there are kind of emergency kind of things that happen. Uh, you know, I pray to God that that doesn't happen to you guys, but I've had it happen and you just need to kind of be ready for it if it does, you know, um, and just kind of pray against the fact, pray against that that wouldn't happen. Um, okay. Dramas and skits leader, that person would be responsible to prepare the dramas and skits for the camp and also would be the supplies there too. Also, uh, in the evenings, uh, I, this, this is something that you need to decide whether you're going to do or not. But in the evenings, especially if you're in, a, uh, in an urban area, even if you're in a rural area in a village and you want to go out and walk around and talk to people. Uh, and sometimes there's, there's churches. Uh, the church has people that they visit on a regular basis and, and like take and help with, with food and whatever. Uh, but to share your faith... Uh, in those visits, that's a really, really important thing. Um, I'm going to show you at the end of the at the end of this meeting um, a, a video, uh, and in that video is our trip last year to Moldova, and um, two of the people that we actually um, two of the people that we actually visited um, between the time we were there in July. And when I met with everybody in, in uh, January, those people died. And we presented the gospel to them. And uh, one of the guys, I, uh, I presented the gospel to him. And he did, just didn't want to have that conversation. And he ended up dying. So sharing your faith and being able to share the gospel was an important thing to do if you should decide that you want to go out. And I just tell you something else, too. Um, you know, teaching English is a great thing, but the kids that you're going to deal with really want to know about you. Um, they're interested in your story and how you came to Christ and why it's important to you. You know, sometimes you just blow the English lesson off and take the kids out under a tree and just talk to them about um, why you've come and that you have an important message for them. And. You know, I probably never see you again unless, you know, unless you trust Jesus. And I brought this message to you so that you can, you can have eternal life. Um, and I think the, that's the most, that's probably the most important, one of the most important things is just connecting with those kids and tell them, tell them your story. Uh, tell them, you know, what you think and how you think and how you, um, you know, how you came to know Christ, you know. Oh, good question. Yes. Now, all of the translators that will be there for the group, are they believers as well, or are they like college kids that just want to better their English, but they don't really know Christ? Like, what, where, where are we getting them from? That's a good, that's a good question. In most cases, we try to get people that are believers. In some cases, we can't get people that are believers, but. 
in most cases we have uh, people that are are believers okay I know I'm going a little bit longer I think I'm gonna try to get uh, move along pretty quick here things that you should bring um, there's the list here uh, actually it's on the it's after, actually out on the website um, This is this is something that you ladies will be interested in. I think as far as um, things that you need to bring, particularly dress. Um, and here it says the clothing should be conservative. Use modesty when choosing clothing for your trip. Be sure that uh, short skirts and all summer clothing are conservative in nature. Here are some ideas what to bring: comfortable, uh, cool clothing to wear at camp. Lightwear jacket and sweater, outfits it for tra travel and sightseeing, team t-shirt. You'll get a t-shirt when you get over there. Um, for the for the church service, married women will need to wear a scarf or a head covering. Okay, and uh, women and girls need to wear a dress or skirt. Men should wear a dress, casual pants, no jeans at church, comfortable shoes and sandals for walking, tennis shoes and work camp. I try when I go I try to go as light as possible I don't I only take like one uh, three changes of clothes that's it um, the reason why I only take three changes of clothes is because I wash them out I just wash them out and I, I mean I take enough uh, like socks and underwear and stuff for all the whole trip but I just wash I just wash my stuff out and then use it because you're gonna need you're gonna need your suitcase space to take take things for the camp. Uh, so the lighter you go with the, the clothing, I would say, the better off you're gonna be. I found that it works really good just to wash your things out, hang them out, and then you, you know then you have another change of clothes that you can wear the next day. And, and a lot of times I'll wear my camp t-shirt, uh, you know, every other day because they'll they'll give you the shirt when you when you get there. A question. Uh, hey. Yes. yes. <laughs> Just um, uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, I know, uh, at least from in the past, you can get an extra suitcase, uh, like a big one, if you pay a hundred dollars. And I was thinking, if we needed as a team, like for example, to get more props or whatever supplies, uh, maybe we could pull together, you know, ten bucks a piece and bring an extra uh, suitcase with us. Yeah. Yep, that, that's a uh, that's a great idea. And what I would do very first, and I don't, I'm not sure what airline you're on. I think I got the itinerary, but you should you should check and see if they allow you two bags. Some do, and some only allow you one 50 pound bag and a carry on, and then a personal item. Um, but you should check with your carrier. I know. Um, Russian Air, uh, which is Airflot, they allow you two bags, I think two bags of 50. Um, but that's a great idea, Victor, uh, to be able to to be able to get a, you know, an extra suitcase to do that. I mean, that's a great idea. Sometimes uh, we pack together, especially supplies. Uh, in the past, I, you know, we just bring all our supplies and. Uh, you know any extra space that we have if we can get all the stuff in you know like half our suitcase then we bring the suitcase in and <coughs> and you know pack all of our supplies so that we can get it a uh, get as much stuff as we can so because some people have more and some people have less space uh, it all depends but that's a great idea uh, general camp information it's it's right here if you want to go to, um, and I'll, I will send you this. Um, as long as I have your email address, I, I can send it to you. Um, and some of you I know have already looked at this, so uh, you can get all kinds of information about what you're going to be doing, um, resources there. Um, I think I'm going to hold the schedule. Uh, because it's, do you guys have time or should I end now? It's up to you guys. Um, I've got 
about how long do you need to go over? Were you going to go over what a day looks like? Yeah, I, go, I was going to go over what a day looks like. Do you want to see that? Um, you can go ahead and I think we've got time if you would go over that. All right. Okay. Um, this is... Uh, okay, this I hope you can see this, but this is kind of this is a sample schedule. I don't know. We haven't had a, a real good time to to talk to um, the leadership over there, uh, Attic and his family. But this is a sample of what we did uh, last year in actually Romania. But this is very uh, similar to what we always do. Um, Saturday you arrive, you have dinner, you settle in. You'll be in your host home. Sunday, the next day, you get up and you do go to church. You only have one church service, and then you have lunch. Then you'll have a team meeting, and then you'll prepare for camp. That's basically what day one will be like. Um, Monday, it'll be the team meeting. It'll be half an hour, and then uh, you'll register the kids, kind of divide them up, put the tags on them. They'll have a name tag. You need to bring name tags. And then we do a morning meeting. We do a song. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day. Uh, and then we do a yogurt with blindfolds. Basically what they do is uh, you get four kids, eight kids actually. You blindfold them. You give them each a yogurt. And then you try to have them feed the yogurt to the other person that's facing them. So they kind of they miss their mouth and it's... It's really fun. Kids love that. Then we do sports, and then there'll be a Bible lesson. And the Bible lesson will be creation, and then there'll be fun time, and there'll be lunch, and then there'll be English. Um, and that's when you do your English, and then we'll be sports. The dodgeball is what we do on that day. Um, then you have the time. You have, uh, in this case, you have a half an hour to prepare for the parents' day. And that's really where um, you do something with the kids that will kind of demonstrate to the parents that they know a little bit of English. Um, I always do I always do the hokey pokey, teach the kids the hokey pokey, and the parents love that. Or the chicken dance, um, you know. So that's something that's interesting for the kids to do. All right. And then the evening meeting. Um, Again, you'll have about a, a – looks like you have 45 minutes there. You get together. They give prizes to the kids for the kids who like who learned their verses or were good in, 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 uh, during the day. You do a song, Who's the King of the Jungle, and then you give them a, a snack. Okay, And then you have um, time to prepare for the next day. And really, this is going to be a little different because you're, we're really not going to be eating with the with the other, with the Moldovan team, we're going to be um, going back to um, Anna's house and actually having supper there, and then you kind of have some free time, um, and in some cases, um, you want to go out. And this is very much similar to that, um, same kind of thing. You have, you know, team meeting and morning meeting. The team meeting is the time that you get together as Moldova team, an American team, and kind of worship. The morning meeting is when all the kids are there. Okay. Um, so then you do sports and Bible time and a skit, um, and then lunch, English. And this is the day that you have cultural day for the American day on on. Uh, Tuesday and then again you prepare for parents day and then you have the evening meeting and this one actually has a this one has um, a skit in it called chasm and uh, it fits this theme of the fall the first day is creation the second day is the fall and then it, it just goes through then Jesus um, it's, it's basically the same throughout the, the whole good question Whole week. Yeah. Uh, so for the skits, we'll be performing the skits in English, and are we gonna have to stop after every line and have an no. interpreter? The skits and the drama, the dramas are silent mimes. They're oh, like, 
okay? The skits basically, and after the dramas, when you're done, somebody will explain what the drama means, okay? For the, right. for the skits, here, here's this, a skit that we do on a regular basis that, that people like, um, the kids like. Uh, we put like, uh, I don't know, five boxes across the front of the stage and, and under each box is a ball. But in the middle between two tables is actually a guy with his head sticking up in the box. Okay. So we take a group of kids out and then one by one we bring them in and say, this is a race. You want to go as fast as you can. You want to take the box off and say what kind of ball it is. Okay. So they go one, ball one. It's a, a basketball. Ball two. It's a soccer ball. The third one is the guy's head. So he takes the, they take the ball off, I mean the box off, and they see the guy's head and they go, ah! So it's, it's just a fun skit time thing, kind of thing that the, the kids really like because the kids, wow. the, the kids are in on the, they're kind of in on the joke, you know, and we, we do other things like that. Um, but that's, that's kind of the way it goes. Okay. Um, um, One other question, Larry. Yes. Uh, we were just curious about the dramas. You had indicated that we bring props with us, but if these are silent, it almost sounds like you guys have them already set up and predefined. Yeah, yeah we, we do have ones that we use, but you're welcome to use whatever you want. Okay. okay. Uh, are they in the booklet? The skits, are they already in the booklet? No. Yeah. No, I, I have them and I'll provide them for you, um, and I, we can go over them later. This is this is high level. I don't, I mean, we can get into the detail if you want to, um, but they're they're very. I mean, I, I know you've seen them that people, you know, like street ministry and stuff has has done the silent mimes, and then somebody gets up and kind of explains them at the end. It, it, they're all something like that. Um, for instance, the chasm on the first day. Basically, there's Two people come out from either side and they pretend there's a hole in the middle of the between them, the two of them. And there's no way to get across. They want to get across, but there's no way to get across. And then Jesus comes up, somebody with a sheet on comes up and uh, puts his arms out. And um, they're able to one guy's able to come across to the other guy through Jesus. So it's it's uh, demonstrates the, the whole idea of sin and how sin separates us from from God and Jesus is the only way that we can get across. So it's a it's a silent silent mind. Okay. Um, I I have one more thing. You can watch it if you want to, but I'm I'm done. Um, it's this. Let's see. This is, uh, I have a uh, YouTube channel of past, um, kind of past um, camps that we've done. And here's here's one of the one that we did last year uh, in Moldova. I don't know if you can hear it or not. <clears throat> Yes. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, at the house we're going to be staying at, you said there's going to be amenities. Are there? Is there going to be a washer and dryer there? Yes, actually there is. Okay. And is there going to be? A, should we bring our own um, detergent, or is it going to be there? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, but I would. I think I'd bring my own. <laughs> right. I think it's a lot of people doing. But I was just. So it's a very, very nice place. Uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's all I have. I'm sorry it took a little longer than I expected. Um, sorry. If you guys um, I need to know when you're going to meet again so we can have our next meeting. Uh, and the next meeting will get... I will probably Lisa email you. Um... I'm going to let Lisa decide. I'm, 
I was going to throw out June 7th, but um, I'll just ask Lisa to email you to confirm. Okay. I uh, I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand. I, I'm going to be – I'm leaving the country. Um, actually, I'm leading two teams, one to R Russia and actually another one to Moldova. So I'll be leaving on the – on the 10th of uh, 10th of July, and I won't be back until after you guys are done. So, okay. uh, so we need to try to get everything. There's you need probably about three more sessions to get everything okay. everything done. Okay. All right. I'll ask uh, Lisa or I will email you this week. We'll set okay. some dates. Yep. Yeah. And if I could ask you guys to go out and register um, so that we can have that. That information that'd be wonderful. All right. Larry, when, ask question. When will we get the uh, PowerPoint from you, or how can we get the PowerPoint from you? I don't know if you have all of our email addresses. Uh, a real good way to do that would be just to join my, join me a, um, on Facebook, um, and I can put that out there so that you can see it. Yeah, do that. Or can you email to Teresa and she? Can, but so we'll so get it off of there. Uh, let me see here. Um, can you see the chat on the um, on the go to meeting? Uh, no. Okay. My Facebook uh, address is just, uh, you know, facebook.com forward slash LJ Ferguson. LJ Ferguson. LJ Ferguson. And then if you send me your contact information uh, through that, I can get you all this. Uh, this is all going to be. Um, it's in Google. It's going to be in Google Docs, and I'll just send you the link, and you can go and look at it. Okay, yeah. If you'll send that to Lisa, we'll make sure we forward it to everybody. That'd be great. Okie dokie. Thanks. Okay. Again. Thank you, Larry. We appreciate your time. Yeah, good Thank to meet you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Larry.